Mr. Crater. My father expected a great deal more than $10,000. Well, I am flattered, Miss Chun, that your father offered me first chance to buy his collection. He had heard of your gallery and you were recommended. Oh, thank you. Still, I am curious why you didn't place them on the market in your homeland. Many collectors would have traveled there just to look at it. Do you understand about uh, saving face, Mr. Crater? Yes, I should have realized. No one would want to part with these beautiful things unless it was very necessary. They're centuries old. You must know, Miss Chun, that my offer of 10,000 was sincere. Now, I wasn't trying to take advantage. I will communicate with my father. Well, first, let me contact some of the collectors that specialize in this sort of art. Perhaps you can get a better price from them than I can offer you. There's a small urgency. I, I'm in need of money. Ah, but not for long. I read about you in the paper. You're in this country for the beauty contest. And I'll bet you win, too. Thank you. I, I hope so. When I was chosen to represent my country, my family could not afford the honor. Nor could they refuse it without, without losing faith, if you understand what I mean. So we were depending on this not only to pay my expenses, but to save my father's situation as well. You'll be all right. I hope so. Am I in the wrong room? No. Customs Department, Miss Chung. This is Inspector Mark. I'm Shannon. We have a search warrant. But why? What's in the case? The bag in your hand. Is that the art collection you brought into the country? Yes. You should have declared it when you came through customs. My family didn't want the publicity, the newspapers, of selling it. And we were told that there's no duty on art objects over a hundred years old. You were told? Not by us, you weren't. You're in trouble, lady. Trouble? How could that be? I, I don't understand. Before you come into a country, you better find out about its laws. There's no reason to lose your temper, Inspector. We'll have to take the collection in. No, you can't take it. It belongs to my father. No rough stuff, Mark. You can relax, young lady. I don't think charges will be pressed. Charges? What kind of charges? Look, I don't want to compound your troubles, but you shouldn't have brought the collection in without declaring it. If charges are pressed, you may go to jail. How do I know you are American custom officers? If you doubt for customs officers, take a look at this badge. Inspector Mark, badge number 127. I don't want to go to jail. I can't go to jail. I can't have anything in the newspapers that would kill my father. We don't mean to seem rough, miss. It can all be handled very quietly, and there'll be nothing in the newspapers unless you put it there. By talking too much? Sorry your stay had to start out like this, but you should have declared it. You'll get a receipt in the mail from headquarters. But you can't take it! You can't!
Oh, excuse me. I was looking for Mr. Wong. I'm W.G. Wong, Mr. Adams. Later, Pete. Thank you for coming so promptly. Well, how long have you been in San Diego? Longer than you. I was born here. Care for a cup? Oh, no, thanks. Our paths wouldn't cross. My workday begins at four in the morning when the market opens. You must be on overtime now. I'm sure you didn't want to see me about buying a truckload of water chestnuts. I'm concerned about a young woman, Mr. Adams. Your daughter? No, the daughter of a dear friend in the old country. She came to the United States about two weeks ago for the International Beauty Contest. Her picture was in the paper. She disappeared a week ago. Find her quickly for me, Mr. Adams. Been missing for a week? Police will probably be interested in that. Why you waited so long? I don't think she wants to be found. There's so many kinds of trouble a beautiful girl alone in a strange country could be in. Oh, Mr. Adams, I'm so worried. I promised her father I would keep an eye on her. Well, I appreciate your problem, Mrs. Wong, but you should have called the police. A foreign visitor, missing, disappearing. But that would mean newspaper publicity. Her family would be disgraced. Well, what was the extent of your contact with this Miss Chun? She called me from her hotel when she first came into town. Said she would see me in a day or so. That she had some business to transact first. What kind of business? The family's financial situation is very bad. She brought some art objects to this country to sell. Who was in the market for it? The Crater Galleries. They're reputable. Please, Mr. Adams, please help me. Well, I'll try, Mrs. Wong. Oh, thank you, Mr. Adams. But remember, no publicity. Just how valuable is this art collection? Very valuable. Centuries old. And there's more than just a girl missing. Hello, New Asia Produce Company. Mrs. Grace Wong, please. Miss Chen is calling. Just one minute, please. Mr. Adams, come back. Mei Ling is on the phone. Mei Ling, where are you? Are you all right? She's crying. She won't tell me where she is. Try to keep her on the line. I can't tell you where I am. Please don't worry about me. I'm working. Come on, doll. The band's waiting to rehearse. Mei Ling, are you sure you're all right? Just don't worry about me. And don't look for me. She hung up. She wouldn't say where she was. Did you hear any background noise? Yes, music. And voices laughing and talking. What kind of music? Oh, just uh, noisy music, I guess. I heard a man's voice say, come on, babe, the band's waiting to rehearse. I didn't hear her reply. Everything went dead. Well, she covered the phone. Is that all? She said she was working, that I shouldn't worry and not to look for her. She burst into tears, and then a, some kind of a siren drowned her out. Then she hung up. Siren of some kind? She said she was working, huh? And Mei Ling does dance. Maybe that's the kind of work she's doing. Sergeant Haley, emergency control desk. In fact, she was going to dance in the talent competition of the beauty contest. Oh, Nick, Dan Adams. Hi, Dan. Where you been, stranger? I'll tell you later. Tell me, have you got a police car on the road right now with a siren open? It's important. No. It's not a thing. All the squad boys are quiet. How about the fire department? You'd have that. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. The fire eaters are all very busy playing poker. All right, thanks just the same, Nick. Talk to you later. Hang on, Dan. Something's coming in. Lifeguard unit, I think. Jack, over and out. I think this is what you want, Dan. Mission Beach Lifeguard Unit number four on a hospital pickup. That's it. Thanks, Nick. I'll check Mission Beach and let you know, Mrs. Wong. They like you. Don't look so down. Get out there and start mixing. Wash your kisser on your own time. Get out on the floor. They like you. 
And I like you. Thank you, Mr. Mason. As long as you want it, you've got a job in my place. You've been good to me. Me? <laughs> I got a hot advice. If my two buddies hadn't recommended you, and of course, if I didn't like you, you wouldn't even be here. But, Mr. Mason, I, I have to change. I only want to talk a little business. You know, uh, you could take a lesson from those other girls out there. They dance, too. But they've learned to give it that little extra. You know what I mean? I think so. But all I do is dance. Oh, with that figure, that's enough. Oh, stick with me, honey. You'll be glad you didn't get lost in that beauty contest. Please, Mr. Mason, I appreciate what you have done for me. I don't know what I would have done without this work. Well, show it, baby. Make me know it, huh? Please don't, Mr. Mason. Please. Please. John? What do you want? Business. Not the kind he's in, though. Don't you know him? No. Well, if the customers stay out front, Mac. Well, I'm not a customer of the house. I might be a customer of yours. I'm interested in Oriental art, the antique variety. I hear you... You heard me say, beat it! <laughs> Mrs. Wong's worried about you. How did you find me? Maybe we better step outside and talk. But I need this employment, Mr. Dan Adams. I'll get you something better if you fire you, I promise. May Ling and I talked for a long time. She told me her story. She was a very frightened girl and didn't want to bring shame on her family and was determined to pay her own way. I finally convinced her to go see Mrs. Wong after work. She promised she would. I hoped that nothing would prevent her from keeping that promise. Ah, how are the ribs? You know, a few years ago, I could have taken you easy. I'm out of condition. How'd you make out? Strictly business. Well, you know, there are some friends of mine who don't like you talking business. Any kind of business with the Chung Dao. Well, I've been telling you. They're going to. Hold it. I think he knows we don't want him hanging around Miss Chuck. Inspector Mark. Mr. Shannon. What? Oh. What's the matter? Why are you hitting me? Because you're an ungrateful dame trying to get us into trouble. <laughs> Miss Chung, we went out of our way to help you. We kept you out of jail and out of the newspapers. We even got you this job. And now we hear you talking about it to strangers. No, I don't know who that man was. I don't want any trouble. <laughs> you want to stay out of trouble, keep your mouth shut. You understand? <laughs> Don't you forget it. Customs inspectors? Oh, you're out of your mind, Dan. I'd know it if we'd confiscated an art collection. That girl couldn't be in trouble. Well, you know as well as I do that art objects over a hundred years old are exempt from duty. 
They were your men, Joe. She even got the number. Inspector's badge, 127. What? 127. Dan. That's the badge number of an officer who was killed in a warehouse off State Street last year. Maybe we've got him. Maybe we've got him at last. Yeah, maybe we have. You're out of this. Not after last night, I'm not. Look, you're liable to lose them, Joe. To them, I'm just a character interested in picking up a fast buck and some hot art treasures. You need me on your team. Dan. You just want to help a girl and get a little personal revenge for a beating. But I want the guys who killed a federal officer. And I want them dead or alive. I'll get them for you. Half and half. Oh, Mason. <laughs> half a million people in San Diego. You're about the last one I expect to see here two nights in a row. Just business. Mei Ling brought some antiques into this country she wanted to sell. Well, I want to buy them for a client before she sells them. Well, I'm afraid you're going to come, have to come back and visit us again. See, the doll isn't going to be here tonight. I know. I know where she is. And what's your problem? There's no problem, but if those friends of yours want to get rid of that stuff they took from her, have them contact my client, W.G. Wong. New Asia Produce Company. No questions asked. <laughs> I'll tell them if I see him. Only I don't think they're going to be around. Ah, uh, that's too bad. You know, that was pretty valuable stuff. Your cut of 50 G's would buy a lot of G-strings. Adams. I'm interested in antique oriental art. I understand you're an expert. May I show you anything in particular? Well, you don't have what I'm looking for. Oh? The things Miss Chun brought into this country. Well, no, I don't, so how can I help you? But did you see them? Yes. Are they authentic? Well, wouldn't you know if you're interested? This is an investment for a client. Is Miss Chun selling it? I believe she already has. I'm dealing with somebody else on a commission basis. Are they worth $50,000? Well, it's worth anything you can get for it. That applies to most art objects. Well, that's for you to come in. I want to make sure they're genuine. And my client will pay you your regular commission if you'll take a look at them for us. Well, 50000 is a considerable price. With whom are you dealing? Will you look at them for us? With pleasure. Where? Inspector Shannon and Mark. And that's the stuff you're interested in, at the $50,000 level. How come you're so eager to sell to the first bidder? It sounds like a fair price. We don't know anything about art. 
We might get more, we might get less. You got the money? In the safe. Well, there's the stuff. Now, everybody's happy. Well, now, Mrs. Wong and I don't know anything about art either. She's buying this as an investment. So I figured you wouldn't mind if we brought an expert in to look at it. Look, character, you said you wanted to buy the stuff. Well, there it is. Every item, nothing missing. Now, don't put us on the spot. Open that safe. We still want our man to look at it. Look, he's on a commission. He's not interested in where it came from or you, so relax. Mr. Crater? It's a frame. Oh, you know Mr. Crater. Who are these men? Well, they say they're customs inspectors, but headquarters says they're phonies. They're using the badge of a customs man who was murdered. Mei Ling, check the box and see if all your things are there. This is Wong, call Inspector Bonner. Right, drop it, Adams. Bye. Mrs. Wong, instead of dialing the phone, I suggest you dial this safe, quick. Now, Karen, you know, I owe you boys a little something for double-crossing me, trying to sell that stuff behind my back. That's the killer you want. He gave us the badge. He sent us after the junk in that case. If anybody killed a federal agent... Now, open that safe. You'll never get out of the warehouse with it, Crater. I'll be the only one who does get out, if you're not careful. You know, you set me up for this, Adams, and I don't like that. Now, get me that money, Mrs. Wong. There's no money in there, Crater. You're right, it is a setup. No one else could have tipped these boys off about Mei Ling's art treasures. <laughs> Thank you. 